live coverage from the 2017 North American International Auto Show here in Detroit from Roadshow's live stage. I'm Tim Stevens, editor-in-chief of Roadshow, and joining me now is Kathleen Murawski, who's marketing manager for the new Chevy Traverse, which is one of the big unveils we've seen here at the show. Welcome to the Roadshow booth. And uh, I, I said big, I meant that literally and figuratively. This is a, a larger right. SUV than we've seen in the past. Uh, three rows now. Uh, Growing a little bit to accommodate that, and, and one of the big things we're talking about is how much rear leg room there is, 33.7 inches, is that right? Yeah, and actually we're going to have uh, best-in-class third row leg room, we're going to have best-in-class cargo volume, and best-in-class passenger volume. So overall, the vehicle is as spacious as it is today, but uh, it is a little bit bigger. And how important is that third row in this category, in, in having the room for you know extra kids, extra pets, extra stuff in the back. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's super important, Tim. I mean, um, our uh, typical demographic carries, you know, kids, mm -hmm. cargo, um, additional people, and we do have up to eight seating, which hands down beats Ford Explorer, the Nissan Pathfinder, and the Grand Cherokee. So um, it is very important for active families and active people so that they have all the space that they need. And size and room is, of course, important, but also economy is important, too. What kind of fuel economy should we expect from the, the new Traverse as we're talking? You know, is it getting bigger, presumably? Is it getting heavier as well, or, or is it not? It's, it's interesting that you ask because it's uh, almost 400 pounds lighter. So lighter, even though it's getting a little bigger, it is uh, almost 400 pounds lighter. It's a substantial lighter. decrease. It is. And, you know, um, we do have better fuel economy with our standard 3.6 liter V6. We have 25 MPGs, GM estimated, uh, highway, which is better than we have today. We also have uh, stop-start technology, which uh, saves on fuel as you're idling. And um, so, again, overall, a big fuel efficiency story. There's also the ability to disconnect the rear uh, drive line as well, right? To run in front wheel drive mode if you have an all wheel drive version? That is true. We have a traction mode select switch, which, based on the driving conditions, if you do a four wheel drive, you can put it in normal, snow, mm -hmm. um, off road, and then tow haul, depending again on the configuration of your vehicle. And so it seems like a bit of a magic trick, you know, to grow a car and make it bigger, but yet also make it lighter. Uh, we've seen that uh, the Malibu did that, for example, and a few other Chevy cars as well. What sort of engineering is involved to make that happen? Uh, high tensile strength steel, I presume, and some other things uh, yeah, like that. That's exactly what it is. It's the it's the steel, and we look at we we look at all different variations of things that we use within the vehicle to make it more fuel efficient. Whether it's that, um, you know, or getting rid of certain things that maybe are unnecessary in the vehicle. So that's what we did going forward. Certain things like. Certain things like as, example? you know, like in our Equinox, we yeah. actually um, had removed the um, ability to sl slide the seats back and forth. Oh, so okay. just, just that overall, mm -hmm. we put it in the rear leg, leg uh, configuration in the max cargo or the max uh, leg room. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to save stuff there. But, you know, just looking at little things like, you know, seating and, and seats and things like that. Now, there are a few different trims of the Traverse. Can you walk me through the, the, the basic broad categories for, for the truck? Sure can. Um, we actually have the, the standard, what we have is LS, LT, and Premier trims. We have those currently. And then, I mean, big news is the new RS model and the high country model. You know, with these models, we feel that um, we give customers more choice. And the RS model is a fabulous new aggressive and sporty look. It's teamed up with a 2.0 liter turbo engine and which gives it that fun to drive, fun to drive experience. And then um, blackout, it's all blacked out, black grill, black bow tie. We've got black 20 inch wheels, black around the, around the windows. So it really, again, gives it that aggressiveness and in a different look, you know, and which could attract some new Traverse owners because of that different look. Then we have high country. And uh, the high country model is actually out on the floor today. And it's, it's luxury, it's all about luxury. We do have um, on the exterior a, a unique grill to the high country model. We have you know, the high country badges on the sides and the rear. We've got high country stitching inside the fabulous loft brown interior, which is standard with uh, suede accents. So it really takes it a step up. And um, on that model, we do have the advanced uh, twin clutch system, uh, which uh, actually takes the 
if you're in all-wheel drive mode and you are driving, it will independently send torque to the rear wheel that has the most traction. So it's active torque vectoring in a, in a big SUV, which is interesting. It's, you know, we see that on great. sports cars to add uh, to enable better handling. Is that the intent in this as well, to enable better cornering and on-road handling? Yeah, ride and handling is one of the things that we focus on in this vehicle as well, um, with the wheel longer wheelbase, too, provides that. Um, so we did look definitely at that in, in when we were developing this vehicle. So this front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, then all-wheel drive with this extra rear differential that gives torque vectoring, right? Correct. And, and so the RS, though, is that front-wheel drive? Did I read? The RS is, but then it has the all-wheel drive option. It is as it's an option. A, okay. Yeah, you, you can configure the vehicles. You get whatever you want to. Yes. And if you get high country, it sounds like you'll always know exactly what you're driving because there's a you logo wherever you turn. You do. It's loaded. <laughs> high country is a completely loaded. A and so we'll talk about uh, fuel economy. You know, we said you can get up to 25 miles per gallon. Is that important in this segment as well, or with gas being so cheap, do people even care about that anymore? Well, I still think we need to look at fuel economy, right? Because, I mean, everyone wants to save a little money at the pump. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking at ways to be more fuel efficient. You know, even people in this category look at ways to budget. Everybody looks at ways to budget and save money. So I think that, you know, fuel economy has still, you know, a place in, in, um, in this segment. And I mean, you never know what happens with gas prices. They sure do fluctuate. I, I think we know what's going to happen with gas prices. The only question is when this is going to happen so, at this point. Yeah. B but assuming that does happen, assuming gas prices do go up, do you see this as being a segment that will continue to live on? Will technology progress enough to enable these cars to still be affordable to drive and people will s they still be interested in them even if gas prices go up significantly over the next few years? Well, I think so because if you if you look at where uh, where we've gone, you know, this the automotive industry has kind of uh, migrated a little bit from cars more to the SUV segment. Yeah, SUVs crossovers are hot right now. Mm -hmm. And and realistically, I don't really see that in the foreseeable future taking any sort of decline. I mean, if we if we do, we might be become more of a steady state. But I mean, crossovers and SUVs are, are, are our hot segment. Um, we were up Chevrolet was up in crossovers 33% in December, so which is, is is spot on. We're doing really well, and I, I mean, I with these new models, with the new <laughs> Equinox and uh -huh. new Traverse, I really can't see that it, it's going anywhere soon. Now let's talk about opportunities for electrification in, in this category. You know, Chevy's very progressive when it comes to the Volt, and now the Bolt, of course, uh, Bolt, which is our car of the year. Uh, so right. w presumably this could be a, a good application for that. You know, you get extra torque, you get better ride quality and better fuel economy as well. Right, and I mean, I'm sure that our engineers and developers are, you know, have are doing research, and and you know that's what it all kind of goes back to is what customers want, right, and expectations and innovation, and so you know Chevrolet, as you know, is at the forefront of all of that, and so I mean, if there's the need and if there's the want, and uh, you know, I'm. I'm sure that uh, we would be going in that direction. Do you think there is the want? Do you think consumers would want that? Would they pay extra for it, I guess, is the question. I guess that is the question. I mean, we've, we have gone from, in, in the Equinox, we have uh, a diesel, mm -hmm. which actually brings you uh, GM estimated 40 MPGs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we obviously, as Chevy as a brand, is, is looking to, uh, and with the Bolt, right? I mean, we're looking at ways to help people in different uh, aspects uh, be more fuel efficient. So, um, of course, I'm sure we would then look at that need as it comes about. And you mentioned diesel in the Equinox. What we're seeing Ford bring diesel to the F-150, but uh, we're sitting not far from uh, Volkswagen, I must say, which has had a little bit of a, a rough road with diesels. Do you think that the diesel market in the U.S. for the consumer vehicles is still strong? Obviously, uh, on large trucks and bigger things like the Equinox makes sense. Would that maybe make sense in a future Traverse? It might make sense. We'll have to see where the market takes us. Yeah. Again, just like electrification, you know, we'll see where the market market takes us and where consumers wants and needs, you know, where everything all transitions overall. Because electrification, autonomous driving, mm -hmm. I mean, all of that is kind of right at the forefront. Absolutely, and we're seeing a lot of that uh, great technology here in the show floor. And it's really great to see the new Traverse. It looks great, really continuing on some of the great styling cues we've seen in the yeah. Malibu and a bunch of other c cars as well coming yeah. before. Thank you very much, Kathleen, for joining us on the show floor.